In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Do you think we've had communications with non-human intelligence? I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Just based on all this data and everything we're talking about, they're, what do you they're think here. What communications would look like? I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, actually, uh, if you look at Diana Pasoka's book again, Encounters, uh, this, this one, um, uh, former NASA engineer, he called the crash, the crashes that were retrieved donations. That, that's a form of communication right there. Uh, yeah. And, and, uh, so I, I don't know the nature of the communication initially and who was doing the communicating. But I am pretty sure from what I've seen from my sources, uh, very sure, highly, that, uh, that, that, that's occurred. Now with, with who? Parts of the government or just individuals? And actually, by the way, if you just, when you say we, if you mean the U.S. government, yeah. So basically, the video was of this Navy admiral not confirming of extraterrestrials, but he's pretty sure of it. For anyone that's watched this show, if you're familiar with it, is it worth watching fully? Because that was just kind of nonsense. Right now, a huge blob of warm air is starting to build up across the southeastern U.S. And at the same time, an even bigger blob of cold air is taking over the west coast. And guess what? They're going to crash into each other and cause a huge mess. Severe weather, tornadoes, snow, and widespread flash flooding will pose a danger to millions of people across more than 30 states, all because of this atmospheric accident. So let's talk about how this is going to affect you and break the forecast down day by day. As soon as tomorrow, things are going to be nuts in the atmosphere, especially in Oklahoma and Texas. This giant warm blob of air is really nice for now. It feels like how spring should feel across the majority of the southeastern U.S., but that warmth will become the primary fuel for thunderstorms as a mighty trough of colder air comes swinging in from the west. When these two air masses meet, all kinds of problems are going to unfold and spread across the country. First of all, right when that crash first happens, there's going to be a ton of spin in the atmosphere. This leads me to believe that some of the thunderstorms that fire during the evening on Thursday will probably explode into big time supercells. Let me check to see if this is accurate. I'll be right back. So looking into it on the weather map, I do see the warm air map that he's showing, but I do not see the cold air map. So if anyone knows where I can find where this exact information is at, let me know because it might not be necessarily true. I do see that Texas is suffering from some pretty bad storms, and I'm really sorry, and I hope the best for anyone that's going through some really hard times right now, because that sucks. Y'all, okay, millions of bugs been flying in the sky and shipping like weird. This Listen. In my entire life, and I lived in Florida my entire life. What? Those are all bugs. Those are all bugs. I thought the restaurant was smoking. Those are all bugs. Can you, you can even see them flying, like... Dude, you can't even tell on the video how many there are. There are millions and billions and trillions of bugs here right now. All of those lines, bugs. Oh my gosh. They're getting closer to me so you can start seeing them more. Oh, I cannot believe this. I've literally never seen anything like this in my entire life. It looks like it's pouring rain. It's literally not even raining. These are bugs. I <laughs> cannot even fathom how many bugs are right here. This is absolutely absurd. Absurd. So I know y'all been paying attention to the internet lately. I know y'all been seeing what I've been posting about the ocean. There's something really going on, y'all. Not gonna hold y'all. I do feel like we're going into some type of apocalyptic season, yo. Wake up! Have any of you seen this in Florida recently, or is this just something that's happening around the area? Are you familiar with what this is? Because there might be some common knowledge about this that I'm not aware of, and maybe it's just some bug migrating season or something, you know? Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, Thank you so much for being subscribed, and thank you so much for watching. And I also want to say thank you so much for making the channel reach 10,000 subscribers. It's only been like five months, and we're already at 10,000 subscribers, and I think that is crazy. Believe me when I tell you that. It means a lot to me. 
I wish that there was something that I could do to celebrate with you guys. And let me know in the comments if there's anything interesting that you would like for me to do for the 10,000 special. Because that would be fun. Or we can just run it like normal and just run these videos. Because it's also fun. But nonetheless, I do appreciate you for being subscribed and I really appreciate you for making this channel reach 10,000. I think that's pretty awesome. I had someone in the comments say, let's go for 100,000. That's pretty ambitious. I'll reach for 50. We'll go with 50 first. So next goal, big major goal, 50,000 subscribers. So let's see if we can make it. And thanks again. Grand Rising, my friends, I've been an avid, I've been on this journey my whole life, okay? I've been a sky watcher my entire life. I've been a sun gazer my entire life. And I'm telling you, this is an object that is back behind the sun. That is not being caused from the sun. That is from the object behind the sun. This is part of what they're trying to hide from you. I told you, I've been watching these things come in for like the last year and a half, getting bigger, 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 and bigger, and bigger, and closer, and closer, and closer. Can you not, you can even see the debris coming off of the said planetoid object. That is a debris trail that is being cast off of that object. This is an object. I've been telling you, there are things in your skies that have been drawing closer and closer and closer at every single second of the day. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you, there's something in our sky. I'm just a normal dude who's trying to tell you that he sees something coming. I'm trying to warn you, okay? You could take my advice or not. You can think that it's God or you can think that it's AI or you can think whatever the fuck you want to but something is coming he's about to come like a thief in the night I can tell you that right now I agree with what this guy is saying as far as that being like an object behind the sun and it's been getting bigger and bigger as the years have gone by. I remember when I first seen that black whatever mass behind the sun is, it was not nearly as big. And now, quite a few years later, when you get to see it, because sometimes you don't just see it all the time, but when you do see it, it's huge. I do not know if it's some kind of reflection on the atmosphere. My theory is, is that because we live on a globe planet, the sun is reflecting off of the atmosphere and it's wrapping itself around it. And that's what's giving the appearance of the halo effect. So it does make me wonder if that really is something behind the sun that we just can't see because it's behind the blinding sun. It kind of looks like it has a gold rim around it, which makes me kind of think about planet Nibiru or whatever the planet the Anunnaki's came from. And I think that's the name of the planet that the Anunnaki's come from. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not 100% sure on this stuff. Still learning. If it really is something like the Anunnaki and they're coming back, that's kind of exciting and scary. I'm not saying I'm a believer in this. I really think that it's some kind of glare slash reflection going on from the atmosphere. But the idea that it's another planet that's approaching us and we're about to have some visitors, that excites me in a way. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that there's a scientific explanation about this? Do you think it's something biblical? Do you think it's something interdimensional? Yeah, let's talk about Skinwalker Ranch, that enigmatic piece of land in a godforsaken wilderness. I've talked to people who have been there. I was actually at a conference last year, a UFO conference, where the lead guy, the lead investigator, was one of the speakers. The guy comes from a very scientific background, and I totally get that, and I respect that in, in every way. However, as a frank supernaturalist, I have a different opinion about Skinwalker Ranch. In fact, when I interviewed my good friend Francisco Carrera, who is the head of ExoPolitics uh, Portugal, he's the, he's the head guy, and he talked about, it's in our second film, I think, The Experts Weigh In, and Francisco states on the record that the Indians, the Ameri Native Americans, know that Skinwalker Ranch is, and they just stay away. They leave the entity alone. That's Francisco's uh, perspective on it, and I certainly agree with him. What happens at Skinwalker Ranch, there's an entity there. I believe there's a gateway, a portal that's been opened who knows how many thousands of years ago. The entity that's there um, is very possessive and manifests from time to time. What they need to do is get a bunch of born-again, spirit-filled Christians who know about spiritual warfare and also Native Americans who would come alongside of us, okay, 
because they, they're the legal heirs of that land. So if all of us got together and we were there, guess what? We might be able to shut the thing down. I am L.A. Marzulli. I'm not 100% familiar with Skinwalker Ranch. I've never actually sat down to watch the show. I've had a lot of people say that I need to watch it because it's really good. But there's just something inside of my mind saying, don't watch it because it's on TV. It's not real. You know, I don't know why. That just always happens to me when I watch things on TV. Even the news sometimes. But back onto the topic, I do like the theory that this guy put out here. Let me know what you think of it. The structure that was found in 1994 called the Gobleki Tepe. And it totally has thrown off archaeology. They've been teaching that the Sumerians are the ones that had the first written language. But they found the Gobleki Tepe, which is a 100,000 square foot temple that dates back to 11,600 years ago, it existed 6,000 years before the Sumerians, 7,000 years before Stonehenge and the pyramids. So this thing had been standing for over a thousand years and it has these giant 16 foot pillars in the middle of them, 10 tons each. And they have these carvings and stuff, very intricate layouts of the star constellations. It depicts the alignment of the stars and the sun it was a prediction of when the flood was going to happen. So the flood that the whole world talks about, every <gasps> culture has a flood story that happened 5,000 years ago. This pillar is 11,000. Yeah. A question I would like to ask, do you guys actually believe in carbon dating? I never would have thought to second guess it, but I've actually talked to a few people that said that it's not actually a thing, that it's something that scientists made up to falsify time. And also, it's really interesting that they had those pillars being able to predict certain scenarios. It seems like a lot of different civilizations back in the day had those, like the Mayans had their calendar, and I'm sure there's other people out there that had the same kind of setup. This is an updated video on all of the myths about water, because I found some more data about water that is just utterly ridiculous. Let's talk about the first one. Drinking more water will flush out your toxins. Most of the toxins are fat soluble. They're stuck in the fat cells. You're not going to detox by drinking a lot of water. That's not going to happen. All right, next one is water will prevent dehydration. Well, yes, you do need water for hydration, of course, but you also need electrolytes and sea salt, which is actually electrolyte as well. The next thing that you hear, drinking more water is really good for the kidney because it keeps the kidneys clean and functioning. There's this idea that if you keep flushing the kidneys, they'll be purified. No, that's not true. You're just causing the kidneys to work a little bit harder. It's not going to clean out the kidneys by drinking more water. The kidneys filter the blood and uh, they recycle a lot of things in your blood. But drinking more water doesn't necessarily clean out the kidneys. There's no data that says that's true. As far as thirst goes, your thirst can go up if you're a diabetic. Your thirst could also go up if you have too much calcium in the blood. But both of those conditions, diabetes, as well as too much calcium in the blood, it's called hypercalcemia, uh, can also cause excessive urination. So that's probably why you're thirsty. So I hope you have a little more knowledge about um, drinking water. I'll have to do a little bit of research on the side to see if all of this is true from what he's saying. I don't actually doubt it because it kind of makes sense to me, but I do like drinking water. I'll, that's, my, that's my primary choice of drink aside from coffee. Just now with the internet, like think about this. This is fascinating. This is how you know that guy got some influence and control. We know everything about Jeffrey Epstein, everything about Ghislaine Maxwell. I got bikini pictures of Ghislaine Maxwell, right? Yeah, you do. Nobody even knows George Soros. They barely know his upbringing. They kind of like this. This guy is actively supporting these uh, district attorneys in these liberal cities and destroying the fabric of these liberal cities and these liberal states. If he's doing that and we got one picture of him, that's different level. And it and it is possible that a guy like that is at odds with the people that want America to be successful. And he's found a way to profit off of this. And who know? I don't know why they would even let a guy like that exist. If there is an all-powerful day that's trying to protect America, why would they let him exist? Who the fuck is he? Can you tell me who he is? Oh, there's no way in the world, like right now, if you look at, are you familiar with ESG, DEI, and CI? 
No. Is that a new thing? I didn't thing? even know what the fuck you just said, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just you take your phone. You're tossing it up like this. You can do this all day long, right? You're not worried about dropping it. But you take this phone and you put it over a five-story balcony. And you, <gasps> doing that makes your heart rate go up. You, you know, you sweat. And you might actually drop your phone. The thing that you don't want to happen because you're overthinking it happens. Your life works the same way by you trying to control outcomes and over prepare and over plan and oh, what's going to go wrong. That becomes your self-fulfilling prophecy. This is my one interview and my one shot. Okay, I, I can't mess this up. Ugh. Again, you're going to be robotic and stiff. Thank you. We've seen enough. We'll contact you if we're moving forward. And no judgment. We all do this. When we over attach to things, our results are worse not better. The solution is to ease up, is to act more. Plan less, act more. If you're thinking too much, you're not acting enough. I'm not gonna lie, just him throwing his phone gives me anxiety. I'd never be able to do that to my phone. But I do agree with what he has to say in this video. Overthinking can definitely mess you up. You can end up going into a spiral once you start overthinking, and that can be either a good spiral or a bad spiral. So in my opinion, it's just best to not throw your phone at all, whether it be just overhand or over a ledge. Just stay calm, understand the situation that you're about to get into, and handle it. And then when you're done, if you feel like you must toss your phone, toss your phone. I, I can't say that for everybody though, because I personally, I don't think that I deal with overthinking like that. I'm pretty simple-minded. So I, I never really find myself going to the point of overthinking or spiraling thinking about something. Normally if I think about something, it's a, it's a topic that I'll think about for a minute or two minutes and then it's done. Unless it gets brought up again and then I can talk about it again. Kind of one of the reasons why I like making these videos. It gives me a way to talk because to be 100% with you outside of these videos, I don't really talk that much. I know, that's hard to believe. This is the most amount of talking I do, and I know a lot of viewers get irritated with it, and they let me know in the comments, and that's completely fine, but for some reason, it comforts me to talk on the camera. It comforts me to come in here and actually talk, and it's my form of spiraling, if that makes any sense. So if you're ever thinking, wow, this guy really talks a lot, I know I do, I'm sorry, it's just what I do to feel comfortable, I guess. I get this email on the Navy secret network, and the email was sent to all the subordinate commanders, urgent safety of flight issue. We are having numerous near midair collisions, and if we don't stop it, we're gonna have to cancel the exercise. And attached to the video was the now famous leaked go fast video. F-18 pilots captured video of this UAP zorching over the water. There's no flight control surfaces or propulsion means that are visible. It's just a little round sphere. And I knew right then and there that was not ours. We don't have technology that like that. I was read into a lot of SAPs and we would never do that in a training range. I also have been read into all of our adversaries' capabilities. I knew that nobody else had that. But the next day, that email was wiped from my computer. We all knew, okay, someone just touched a SAP and they got rid of it and we can't talk about it. Think about that. We could have planes falling out of the sky, but we're not going to talk about it because of this overclassification. That's got to be the suckiest part about being in the military or high official places when you're working is you cannot talk about these things. How can someone just hold all of that hidden information away from people? And it's got to be so relieving to be able to talk about these things when you finally get to actually talk about them or when you're brave enough to talk about them, just for people to not necessarily believe what you're talking about, you know? If all of the ice on Earth were to melt, sea level would rise by 262 feet. It is suspicious as shit that some of y'all do not believe me when I say the Doomsday Glacier is a real problem. This map made by National Geographic depicts what the world would look like if all of the ice caps did in fact melt. The Atlantic seaboard for North America would be completely gone along with Florida and along with the Gulf Coast. Over in Europe, London, Venice, the Netherlands, and Denmark would all be underwater. In Asia, there would be about 600 million people underwater. Australia would get a new waterway right in the middle of it, but it would lose its coastal strip and that's where 80% of the population in Australia live. And then we have the culprit of the majority of it, Antarctica. It would turn into a lush, beautiful green forest. 
Now, you may not believe anything that I say, but what I do need you to believe is that the Doomsday Glacier is melting faster than what scientists thought. This article just came out today from Scientific American, and it says exactly that. They are worried about the potential impact on sea level rise. Honestly, I would have thought that most of the continents would have been pretty much completely submerged. That's not nearly as bad as I thought it would have been if, if all of the ice on Earth were to melt. Have you ever heard of the dog-headed man? It starts 4,000 years ago. There's a race of hybrid humans that it is a man's body with a literal dog head. They found it in Libya, carved onto these boulders. It was first written about by a Greek philosopher in 30 BC or something. Greeks have written about it. The Romans have written about it. Alexander the Great has written about the Sinocephalus. Marco Polo, Christopher Columbus, St. Augustine, and just all these like explorers and missionaries throughout history have all written about dog-headed men. The earliest writings from the Greek philosopher he talked about he went and was exploring India and deep in the mountains there was these dog-headed men and he said that they were brutal and and they would capture the people and then eat them and like they would talk to each other by barking imagine just being on, and like you're about to go to battle you got your own people and then you hear over the hill you just see all these dog men come up and you just hear howling there's a story of King Arthur and he claimed to have fought a dog-headed men army in the mountains surrounding Edinburgh from the book of Enoch where it talks about the fallen angels making hybrid of human oh, animal beast. Yeah. I have recently heard about the dogmen and I kind of can believe a creature like that existing and I actually have some theories around it as well. I think that we either do still have or we have had humanoid creatures that were like these dogmen. They could have had heads of monkeys, they could have had heads of horses, things like that. And we as the human species ended up fighting them off because we just wanted to claim dominance over them. Or maybe they just suffered horrible disabilities that we conquered them over because maybe we're more efficient at hunting. But one of the theories that I kind of firmly believe is there is multiple humanoid species out there, or at least there were, and some of them are more advanced than we even know today. And that's what we classify as aliens. They're just the most advanced humanoid creature that's just always been on this planet. They're more familiar with everything. And that leads me to believe that there probably at one point of time was other humanoid creature types. And in today's tales, we tell them as werewolves and vampires, aliens, the boogeyman, things like that. All of those were probably other creatures of the past that we've just converted to this lore that makes them seem like the bad guy. I think that's an interesting theory. The following footage is from a witness named Audrey. Her ring camera captures something truly paranormal, what looks like some sort of orbs or plasma. Activate her ring camera. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think this could possibly be. You are currently being recorded. I'm pretty certain that that's just like a spider web or a cobweb that's just wet with dew maybe, and it's just dangling in front of the camera. That's my guess because that kind of happens not quite as boldly, but that kind of happens with my, my security cameras as well. It doesn't look quite like that, but it does happen. Can I blow your mind right now? Okay. What if everything we know about the moon is wrong? Chris, can you pull up that video? Well, look at this. That's the moon out in broad daylight on full display. I recorded this video at 4.30. I'm not going to finish that video because I didn't even see the moon. I think the guy's head was blocking it. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip over this one. I'm sorry. Jeez. The sound of the waterfall coming on, it just scared the crap out of me.
first I thought it was a fake like body, maybe like a fake Yeti or a Bigfoot body in there. But looking at it a little bit further, it kind of looks like it could be a bear. I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's a bear. The video has no description other than waterfall. Let me know in the comments what you think it is or if you even think that it's real. And did that waterfall noise get you like it got me? Because that scared me. Like, that made me jump. Look, it was just casually passing in Saudi Arabia, y'all. Look at this. Look at this. They are here, right? They've been telling us we are in a new time and space. And look at that in Saudi Arabia. Now, before anybody says this is fake or project, project blue beam, there is another angle of this. Y'all check this out. Look, check this out. Here's another angle of it. Look, look at that. Y'all see that? So can somebody explain what is going on? You can clearly hear the noise, a silent humming. You can clearly hear it. And then what are the odds of it? Another person catch another angle of it, y'all, in the same night. Look at this, y'all, in Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah. Let's get it. I just have one question, y'all. With all the events that are taking place in 2024, why are we still going to work? Why are we still going to work? I mean, these elite people have never worked a day in their lives. Think about it, right? We go to work to pay their bills. Who are they paying? Why are we still working in 2024 when this literally is about to come to an end? Like the whole world is going through it, but yet they still have a slaving away in America. That's crazy. Today, I've seen that UFO video floating around quite a bit on TikTok. It looks really good. I do not know what it's from or if it's real. It's a pretty neat video, but the skepticism in me just doesn't want to believe it. Let me know in the comments of what you think. Or is this a part of some festival? Is this some kind of drone that they were flying around in celebration for something that I'm just not aware of? That was really cool. And if that's a drone, I want one. A German flat earth map from World War II has just been uncovered and it depicts another ice wall all around earth with other continents and land masses that are outside of it. And supposedly Germany during this time period went on expeditions. See these black circles? I had to erase that so we didn't have to see their symbol, but this is supposedly where they went out and just claimed this land. Here's New Schwabenland, whatever that is. And they actually have Asgard way over there. And then up here, we've got Terra de Vista. I'm not sure what that is. And I don't know what that is either. Is that supposed to be the top of the earth or something? And then over here, we have the lost continent of Lemuria, which apparently went underneath the sea and sank somehow, but I guess it's on this map from the 1940s. But a lot of these words we can't even read because it's in German, but it, it's, this is also a reflection of the moon map, if you've ever seen that. Wow, that kind of makes me think that maybe Hitler ended up killing himself and actually just escaped over the ice wall, and that's where he resided for the rest of his days. That's a crazy theory. I would have never, ever would have thought of that if I have not seen this video. So you, if you guys remember in the photos of the 1900s, you always see a white sky. And we ask, well, why do we got a white sky? Well, that's why we got a white sky. Because you had blimps, airships, zeppelins, and all types of things flying around the entire time. That's why they whited out the skies. Because they didn't want to show you that people were flying around in blimps and zeppelins and airships all the time. And it's interesting too because when you think about it, if you could fly around in a blimp, you could see the whole world. You could map out the whole world with a blimp. Imagine flying around on that for three hours with five gallons of gas. Well. Gallons of gas right now are like three bucks, four bucks a gallon. So times five, that costs you 20 bucks. 20 bucks. And you can fly around for three hours. And this is why, when you think about the blimps, why nobody cared about the airplanes flying around. I don't know if you guys ever watched the footage from the Wright brothers and the first airplane that's flying around, the people are like looking the other direction. They're not even paying attention because they were already in the air. Hi, Peter Kane, president of the Krypton Foundation. 
this person got a very clear documentation of a cryptid that is prevalent all throughout the world. Okay. That is a wood imp. Me and my colleagues from major universities have verified this is real. That is a wood imp. I don't know. That kind of just looked like a little statue on top of a tree, or maybe even a carved one at that. But hey, it could have been a wood imp. Are any of you guys familiar with this person's content? I've never seen them before. I've heard of them. So this is the first time I've actually seen their content. This is a photo that came from the dark web. A lot of people believe that this woman has some kind of illness because of our skin. But come to find out, she's actually a Dracodian alien. Reason why I'm speaking about this topic because a lot of people have it confused about these aliens and what they really mean to this planet. What if I told you they are not the real aliens, but we are? You ever ask yourself why do these aliens have all this advanced technology? They could travel the universe, they could travel to the deep oceans, and we can't do nothing? It's because this is really their planet. Reason why I'm speaking about this topic is because I see the Las Vegas alien story just came back up once again and they said these aliens was using cloak technology. They can do more than that. We have some people that ask this question right here. If these aliens is so advanced, why do they hide from us when they see us? That's an easy question to answer. Do you see the cows, the birds, the pigs, the chickens, people? Do you see what people do to other life forms on this planet? Shit, I hide too if I see people coming. 2024 is the year of exposing everything. You see what's going on with Hollywood celebrities? Everything is being exposed. That's real small because once these aliens start coming out, it's going to blow your mind. Let me tell you something. If you look at this image and say, oh my God, that's an alien, just know when they look at us, they say, oh my God, that's an alien. It's no difference. First of all, very interesting photo. I do not know if this is true or not. It kind of looks like it could be an AI generated or Photoshopped photo. But that's an interesting theory that I also would have not thought. What if we are aliens and we have basically just run all of these other creatures away that are more advanced than us? Did you guys hear the NBC Nightly News? The Pentagon said that there is a potential mothership headed towards Earth. Mm, yeah, you told me about it. He said it so casually. And he's like, we'll be right back after this. <laughs> and it's like, what? All right, hold on. Listen to this. <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> Stay with us. end on that. Now oh our gosh. sponsor, Denny's. How you doing? Grand <laughs> Slam. Like, what? <laughs> How is that so casual, nonchalant? Like we've, we, I feel like we just talked about the possibility of there being another species of whatever. What does that mean, another like, ship? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Oh my But there's like, goodness. there's this thing that's been flying around, it's flown around Earth or close to Earth before, but it looks like a giant, like rock-looking thing like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the way it flies through space almost defies physics. Mm. Yeah. Like it's not like completely going off of gravity. And so this one expert in the Pentagon or whatever is like, yeah, it's some other shit. To be honest, the clip kind of looked like it was AI generated. So I don't know if this is real or not. Let me know in the comments if you know, because I think that this was false. <laughs> See you, buddy. It's okay. Why you can see the white of his eyes in the corner. I think I've seen what he was talking about. The little circle that you've seen in the video, the red circle. That was me doing that. That was not on the video. I'm just pointing out what I think he's talking about. I kind of could see a shape there, but I'm pretty certain that that was just a tree limb. Let me know what you guys think. Did you know, for example, that some animals don't die? Crocodiles, alligators, flounders, they just keep getting larger. They don't die at all. 
they're just as vigorous at 70 as they are at 5. Um, so how come your textbook says that the crocodiles die at age 70? That's because the zookeeper died at age 70. Okay? <laughs> crocodiles just keep on going. They have no known finite lifespan. They simply get bigger. So in the animal kingdom, you know, it's not necessary to die or age. They just keep getting bigger. That's why you don't see gigantic crocodiles. It's because they, they die of starvation, accidents, or disease. But they have no finite lifespan. I actually looked this up just now, and it is confirmed true that crocodiles aren't confirmed to have an age. They just die of disease or starvation for the most part. That's really crazy to me. I did not know that. It's only a matter of time before scientists try to take whatever gene is causing that and implement it into medicine to make humans live forever. I guarantee it. Someone's going to try to do something like that with a creature that supposedly cannot die. Back in 1943, during World War II, the government was experimenting with technology to make battleships like this invisible. One of the weirdest projects was called the Philadelphia Experiment, which involved this ship called the USS Eldridge, which was a destroyer escort ship. And the goal was to make this ship invisible by manipulating the gravitational and electric magnetic fields to create the invisibility cloak on the ship. They bring the ship out and the crew starts the experiment. Right as they were doing it, the ship has a green cloak around it and then disappears. The ship reappears 200 miles away. So it actually was successful and the ship did disappear or turn invisible or teleport. And then it returned back to the harbor. When the crew returned with the ship, that's when it got really weird. Because there was accounts of a lot of the crew being sick, nauseous, dead, missing body parts, driven crazy and just not well. And the craziest one, some were melded into the ship and actually fused inside the ship. Now, this is a pretty controversial story. A lot of people don't believe it. A lot of people think that it was actually a gas leak and the crew was hallucinating. How did all the crew have the same hallucination? There is evidence of documents being missing, government making efforts to bury this experiment and not talk about it. There's a lot of accounts from Navy families and witnesses saying that they knew people or were a part of it and that they saw the green flare and the crew being messed up. I was looking into like what happened to the ship after it was transferred to Greece and then destroyed and eventually sold for scraps. Do you think this actually happened or is this a conspiracy? That'd be a horrible way to go you just see a flash of light and next thing you know you're fused into a metal ship and you can't do anything until you're pretty much dead that'd be terrifying so check out this tesla conspiracy theory out y'all and you're going to get a kicker out of this listen to this a conspiracy theory i think might be true last week a tesla crashed through a wall of my house i was home when it happened the first thing i did was check to make sure my roommate was okay then i called 911 then i went outside and started taking pictures of the crash my first picture was at 5.07 p.m. My first picture of the tow truck drivers trying to take the Tesla out of here was at 5.10 p.m. It had literally just happened minutes earlier, and so I was like, hey, can we pause for a second? Like, the cops are on their way right now, and the tow truck driver actually said to me, F you. and I was like, what? Are you kidding me, dude? Like... My house just got ran into. Have some empathy. And no joke, he goes, here's your empathy. And I was like, oh my God, you're being that much of a dick right now? And he goes, get the f*** out of my way. And then he shoved me and he threatened to beat me up and kill me if I didn't let him get the car out of there. So my question is, is Tesla's automatic crash system alerting tow truck drivers? And are they offering them a bunch of money to get the car out of a situation before news cameras show up? They don't want any more negative press because those tow truck drivers were here so fast and they were so aggressive, there had to be a bunch of money on the line. When you have that Elon Musk money, you can guarantee that tow trucks get there before the cops do to take care of the situation. But that right there is a crazy incident. Has anybody else ever experienced something like this, y'all? That's a good theory about Tesla alerting tow truck drivers to rush getting a Tesla out of the way to keep from being in media's eyes. That's actually a really good theory. But one thing I want to know the most in this video is, is the person that crashed into the house okay as well? Or was this a self-driving Tesla? Or did they even, maybe they said that in the video, let me check. Yeah, nowhere in the video did they say a person crashed that Tesla into the house. He specifically said 
a Tesla crashed into my house. Was it self-driving when it did that? And if that's the case, did it really alert a tow truck company ahead of time before it crashed because it knew it was going to crash? All really good questions, but I want to know about the driver. How did the driver do? Were they okay? Do they have any follow-up information as to what happened to the Tesla? There's so many holes in the story I need answers to. Yo, what is going on? And why are the clouds in the shape of a square? Meanwhile, this is not even a joke anymore. I think there's like 600,000 people in Texas are without electricity right now. This is literally hail coming through the roof. I'm putting this on my entrance claim. What's today? There's people literally using stuff to cover their heads. The hail is coming inside. It's breaking the roof of Walmart. I believe this was by WX Chasing. Y'all, we've been telling you the freaking weather is not normal, but y'all do not listen. Like, this is literally what was falling in Fort Worth. Do y'all remember when I just showed you Colorado's multiple feet of hail? There was a literal Boeing that got pushed by the wind. Y'all, this is insane. This is three or four weeks straight of just straight up chaotic storms, tornadoes everywhere. It's mass destruction all over the U.S. I'm telling y'all, hurricane season is going to be crazy. Man, I really hate that for anyone that's going through that because that is scary. Golf ball size hail, and did you see that picture of all that hail piled up at that window? That's bizarre. Man, I do think that this year is going to be really nasty across the world with weather. Did about I tell this? you about the half guy? In the Pickering Mall? Yeah, so it only happens when you work night shifts there. Normally, when the mall is shut down, the lights are off. No one's allowed to be in there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and there's been times where it's just been, like, one guard for that entire mall. And, and it was yeah, just you. It was just me one time. Oh, this is when we were, like, short staff. That's really like, five nights, fam. Yeah, 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 it was pretty much was five nights at PTC. Right? Yeah, five <laughs> nights. So I get up and I start walking around. One of the receiving bays, this spot looks like the back. Uh, you showed me it before. There's one of the bays that we have to go and check on. So I went there mm -hmm. and I see a side profile of a guy all the way at the end of the hall. Yeah. And I'm like, shit. And I'm walking up to the guy. As I'm getting close to the guy, the guy is looking a little bit weird because I see the side profile of him and he's not moving. He's literally like this. He's got a long trench coat on. He's got like a hat on. Weird, ball. right? Weird. Cat. It's like a coat. Is crazy. No, seriously. And then he doesn't have any legs. That's what so the fuck? Yeah, so yeah, crazy, crazy man. man. What happened? He just disappeared, right? Huh? So I start walking closer. Then the thoughts start racing. Yeah, oh, yeah, he yeah. He looks odd. He looks a little bit weird. Yeah, now your heart's pumping. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? I'm like, who, what am I looking at right now? I don't scare easily, but I'll need a new pair of shorts after this one. To me, I have a feeling this is just a fake video. I don't think that this is real. Pretty sure it's a hoax. The following footage is truly chilling and terrifying. And based off this unidentified man's reaction, I believe it's 100% credible. He's looking out into the brush when he thinks he notices something out there, maybe a cow or something else. But as he's recording, you see the creature spring towards him. The question, though, is, what is this thing? It looks humanoid in nature, but not human. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think this could have been. Is that a cow? What is that? Oh, freak! <laughs> Oh, 
I kind of think that this is also a fake video. It's someone in the woods saying, oh, is that a cow and recording for no reason? Kind of seems like a setup to be a hoax to me. But it would be my luck. I would do the same thing. I would film this situation. I'd be like, oh man, it might be a cow in the middle of the woods. Let me film it real quick. And it turns out to be some kind of weird creature. And I post it online and no one believes me. <laughs> what do you guys think about this video? Do you think it's real or do you think it's fake? This is a concept people seem to be failing to grasp. As soon as you have robots that can do all the labor tasks necessary to sustain human life, money becomes meaningless. You don't need to pay a robot. Robots don't sleep, they don't eat, they don't complain, they just perform their task. And if you can have a robot that can see and hear and do things autonomously without having to be pre-programmed with a specific order of doing things like a factory, if you have a robot that can just move around in an environment and do things, then the whole supply chain becomes flipped on its head overnight. I see people saying all the time, well, the elites will never allow that. They're the ones pushing it. And then I hear people say, well, the stuff that comes out of the ground that builds the robot still costs money. Yes, it does, because you have to pay people to extract it. The robots will extract it. The robots will do everything. What are you not getting about that? The entire supply chain, from the extraction of the natural resources from the ground, all the way to the final product that goes into your home that you use, like this thing right here, will be entirely created, sourced, marketed, managed by robots. The entire thing, from the bottom all the way to the top. Every step of the process done by robots. And once that happens, do you really think money is going to matter? Now, I get what this guy is saying 100%, and I'm almost on the same boat with him, but I disagree because of a few minor flaws. The biggest flaw is, yeah, sure, there's no labor cost because nobody's actually doing the work once all of the robots are doing the work, but that little stick that he had came from a tree and being that it came from a tree means that it came from land meaning that someone owned that land for them to take that tree so in order for a company to make that tree into that little stick you have to pay for it unless that person is just giving it away and I doubt they're going to do that because they're here to make money, right? People are not going to just want to give up their produce, material, you name it. They're not going to want to give it up, even if they didn't have to put their hands on it for it to grow or become available. Being that it's their property and land, they're going to want compensation for what's leaving their land, if that makes any sense. I really do like the idea of robots being a asset and a helping tool to people in the workforce, but I definitely disagree to m replace people in the workforce with robots unless that's exactly what the workforce wants and it's acceptable to do. AI and robots is a really big topic and it can be a touchy subject for some people. So let me know what your opinions are on this. That can't just be a deformed crab chicken. That's gotta be CGI. But that's really good looking CGI if it is. It really looks good. Look at this y'all, check this out. This is in Ukraine. Now tell me, is that a transformer? Because whenever we see these type of lights, you know, these crazy bright lights in the sky, people are saying it's a transformer. The power went out. Something happened with the, with the electricity. But you can clearly see that it's coming from the sky. There's a red light in the sky. And it seems that this red light is beaming this blue light down. Um, I don't, right? The blue light's not coming from the ground up. It's coming from the top down. Doesn't it look like that, y'all? Is there something going up? Remember a couple of days ago, something like this was happening in um in Cuba and people were saying it was a tornado. Well, a water spout, but it was not a water spout. People were saying it was not a water spout. But this is clearly some type of technology that's happening in Ukraine right now. And you can see the sky. The sky is completely grayed out, completely grayed out. So there's there's something that's hiding there, as you can clearly see. Jesus, what a time that we live in, y'all. Dang, that's a really good question. Now, during video editing, I'm not going to know at this moment, but after I do this in video editing, I'm going to see if I cannot slow the video down to see if the blue beam is leaving from top down or if it's coming from down and going up. Because to me, it kind of looked like it was going up. It did not look like it was beaming down. So we'll see in video editing. Give me a second. All right.
right, so with the magic of video editing, I personally still have not seen it in this moment, but during video editing, I'll see, so I, I'll figure out if it's going up or down. But regardless, do you know what this is from? Let me know if you have any idea, because I'm curious. The mummification that you see in Egypt and these tombs, all the riches, all the gold, the cats, the wives are all in there with you. When you go, everybody got to go. Well, why is that? If I'm going to go to some afterlife, I know that this money and gold ain't coming to the afterlife. They were told that the mummification process was about saving the DNA to be brought back to life at a later time. The beginning pharaohs, they were the sons of these Anunnaki gods. We promise you, we're going to bring you back. You're going to be immortal. We'll bring you back to life. So keep everything here. Hide it good while the tombs were hidden to come back to life. Let me get my key so I can get my gold and get all my riches back out because I'm a rule again. It was about preserving DNA to be cloned, transferred into a brand new body here in this realm, nowhere else. That's an interesting theory. I guess my question to it is though, where are they now if they've been reincarnated or if they've been revived from that state? Apparently they've not been revived and if that was their expectations, a lot of them are in museums and they're going to wake up to a rude awakening. <laughs> migraine, depression, insomnia, back pain, stress, we can use these balls. Okay. So when we have migraine, depression, insomnia, then we put ball on the head like this. And after we tap it, all vibration goes inside our body because we have 70% water inside our bodies. Okay, close eyes. So if we have back pain, then we put on back like this. Now join your knee together. So this is the natural therapy. We have seven different chakras in our bodies. Okay. So when one chakra is not uh, is blocked, we get sick. So we are doing opening our chakras. Okay, close eyes. I want one of those singing bowls so badly. I have a singing bowl. It's it's really tiny. I'll bring it out here in a minute. I want one that's really big and really bassy because they're really fun to play with. And if they help heal you, that's a plus. And I have friends that love when I ring the singing bowl because it basically calms them down and it helps them breathe. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Like I said, it's a really tiny bowl, but it sounds pretty good. I don't know how this mic's gonna pick up, so bear with me. Not bad, really high pitched. And I can make it ring for a while, and I can make it really loud. But yeah, that's my singing bowl. I love my singing bowl. It's really fun. And I want to get a really big one that's really bassy. I don't know if they truly help. It helps me. I love doing it. It calms me down. I could do it for multiple minutes at a time. It's really soothing. Do any of you mess with singing bowls or bowls like that in general? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I hope you enjoyed today's clips. It was a pretty long one today. And as always, if you did enjoy any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And again, I really appreciate the 10,000 subscribers. It means a lot to me. And it's been an extremely, extremely fun journey to get to this point so far. 
and I have a feeling it's only going to get better. And I'm trying to improve the channel as time progresses, making minute changes here and there. So if you have any input, please never feel afraid to leave a comment. I do not take any of it personal as like a hate comment or trying to belittle me or anything. Go at it because I learn a lot from the comments and I learn how to guide my channel to what makes it more enjoyable for the audience to watch. If you have any hints, tips, tricks, or ideas, or just input, don't be afraid to let me know because I appreciate all of it, even the really negative ones. And with that being said, have a good day.